Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the Edmonton Oilers recap of the season that just was and an outlook on the 2023-24 upcoming season. Uh, the 2022-23 season that just was was an absolute fire season for the Oilers in terms of offense anyway. Um, they finished sixth overall in the in the standings, 109 points, 50 wins, and second in the Pacific behind the Vegas Golden Knights. That ultimately it was that, yeah, that that offense, like 32.4% on the power play. Obviously that was first in the league. The next best was 26%. Just to put that in perspective, that whole 6.4% on the next best power play in the league. So it was absolute fire. Um, but one of the things that did sort of show a little bit for them was outside of outside of that core group that they had, um, they struggled a little bit. So three of their uh, players had 100-point seasons. So you had, uh, obviously, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, with absolute phenomenal seasons, but you also had uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins uh, get a hundred point, his first hundred point season as well. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the first three players to get a hundred points in quite some time. Um, I can't remember exactly when the last time it happened, but it had been some time since that had happened. So you know, record breaking sort of season from them. Um, however, one of the issues that I alluded to was outside of their their top core sort of forwards, um, the next best forward they had only had 28 points for the season. And one of the, it was it was, there was two of them. Evander Kane was one, and in all all fairness, he was out for half the season. However, you know that was one of the issues they had for most of the season. If it wasn't that top line or that power play top power play line doing the job, um, it didn't really happen. But again, they made the playoffs. They come up against the Kings in the first round. They win in six um, after looking like they could have potentially been down 3-1 in the series. They come back to win game four and ultimately run away with it from there. However, they come up against the Vegas Golden Knights and lose in six in the second round. Vegas obviously went on to win the cup, um, but Edmonton's run was ultimately halted there and you'll have to wait another season to see if McDavid can get that long long awaited uh Stanley Cup. Everyone's expecting him to win. Uh but that yeah, pretty insane season for the Oilers in terms of what they did and how they did it. But again it was the defense and probably goaltending issues that 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 held them um from going to that cup final once again. Uh, but uh, that's it for me for the recap. I'll hand on over to Jaden to take you through the 2023-24 lineups. All right. So just slightly over the cap, um, just just under 400,000. Uh, starting off with the lineup, you got Kane, McDavid, Brown. Brown brought in through free agency, so we'll see if he plays with McDavid or not. Um, you got the the Nugent, Hopkins, Dreisaitl and Hyman line, Janmark, McLeod and Afugul. And then you got Halloway. Um, or Holloway, um, Malone and Ryan. So that that's that's the forward line. Basically, it's two lines, and then you know um, maybe a serviceable third line, but then it drops off pretty dramatically, especially on ice time. Defenders: uh, Daniel Nurse, CC, Ekholm, Bouchard, Kulak, and Deshanay. Deshanay. So, um, yeah, make of it what you will. Obviously, it gets better with uh, bringing in Ekholm last year. Goalies: uh, Skinner and Campbell tandem. Uh, as per last year, we see who, who gets the um, who takes the realm in regards to the first place. Obviously, Campbell finished strong in the playoffs, but didn't get played. Um, you know, make of it what you will. But obviously, Skinner has uh, done pretty well. He's already said that he's um, gotten better and looked over a lot of his things from last year. So we'll have to see if that comes true. Scratches: Peterson, Broberg, and Nima Linen, and uh, just Peterson. They're brought in through. Free agency, notable losses, Jukestad, obviously Yamamoto and Costin in that uh, Detroit trade for, you know, the biggest man of all time, future considerations. So it is what it is. Not too much loss, not too much brought in. I don't see how they get better. Uh, like the salary cap goes up a little, like one million, but doesn't really 
make a lot of these contracts that much better. Um, there's not much to, to really say here. It looks like it's just pretty much the same old from last year. And can you do it with the, this team from last year? Like, sure, they score goals, obviously. The power play first in the league. Goals for first, um, first in the league. But they they can't really defend. And um, PK, 20th, goes against 17th. Kind of needs to be under three to um, go further in the playoffs. And just relying too much on McDavid and Dreisaitl. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to you and your thoughts. And should they have maybe made a few more moves um, than just getting Brown? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing with Connor Brown, obviously, starting on that first line, um, guy could end up being a point per game player lining up with Connor McDavid. So <laughs> um, it'll well, yeah. be interesting to see uh, a if that line does actually happen, and you know, b <laughs> what he does if he does line up next to Connor McDavid. Because I think there's a lot of players out there that you know would be just loving to go from a twenty point player to to play him with Connor McDavid um but yeah I don't it's hard because you know you said it yourself with that cap situation um it's not like they have a lot of cap space to do much with anyway uh the 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 thing I do I am interested to see what happens with it is um Ekholm they have a full season with him so obviously they picked him up um at the deadline last last season, which that was the good thing about the trade is they didn't just pick him up for as a rental. They picked him up um, to go on for the next, I think, was he got three seasons left in his contract? So um, that I'm excited about because one of their biggest issues has been their defense. We've been very critical, um, as has a lot of other people, about Darnell Nurse and that and that contract. He's not a terrible defenseman, but he's not a nine point two five defenseman. Yeah, um, subs up for well. So yeah, it's 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 tough. Like I don't mind him being there, but also I would much prefer him being there for like six mil than nine point two five. Um, I don't really rate Cody Cece massively. Um, Evan Bouchard, I feel like he's just a defensive liability. Uh, yeah, and, he, and he that, is young, and that, developing, but hundred percent defensive liability. Yeah, but he might he might work on that, you know. That might yeah. be his big thing this year. Um, and especially with Ekholm there, so that that's where my sight goes to first and foremost is what can Ekholm do, um, you know, going to camp, all the rest of that sort of stuff, building some that chemistry and relationship with this this core D, and going out and and having that hit the ice because Ekholm's a fantastic defender. So, um. What can he bring to this side? Because that could be the the big trump card for them. Because we know, yep, okay, they might not have the best bottom six, and that is an issue. But again, when you've got such firepower in the first two lines, you hopefully... I mean, Evander Kane missed half the season last season because of his, his, his wrist. Like, yeah. that shouldn't happen again. You Like, how unlucky can you be? Um... No, but injuries happen, yeah. but they don't really have the depth to step in for injuries. Like, no, they they don't. But if I'm if saying if McDavid or Drysdale drop, drop, I feel like this team drops. Like that, that, oh, that, that yeah. is the problem. That, um, yeah, like they obviously need to stay healthy. But my point there was is that you know he, he it's not like he missed it because he's injury prone. He missed it from a freak accident. So they should gain him for a full season, which means that top six is just going to be deadly. Um, and I feel like it can cover that bottom six. They play massive minutes, but that leads to what, you, like, you know, with the injury thing, when you play that many minutes, you do increase your chances of injury. Um, the real question mark is that defense. And I'm interested to see if Ekholm can do it because that's all they need. Like, McDavid's a freak. Dreisaitl is a freak. They've got enough on their top six wings to do it. I still question that bottom six but again that top six is strong enough their goaltenders skinner has shown he's reasonable campbell again like you said in the playoffs he he had a phenomenal game four literally saved their ass the reason that they weren't three one down in the series and then he doesn't play like they just don't play him they go straight back to skinner 
Uh, I, I don't know. Bad, I, bad, bad coaching there. management there on your goalies. You you play the hot yeah. hand, and they kept going back with Skinner, who was definitely not hot in the playoffs. Who who was even though he was hot through the season, you got to give him credit. Like, yeah. and I guess this is where it is. Like, can Campbell find his form? Because if Campbell can get back to top form, Stuart Skinner takes another step. That's a great goalie tandem. It's that defense in front of them. Can it be strong enough? And that's all that's going to take. I'm still, I still have big question marks around them because I, you know, Ekholm may not be the be all and end all for it. He may not be enough to to get them there. And that goaltending tandem, yeah, it's still can they both fire at the same time, or is one of them going to shit the bed and the other one going to have to carry them? Um, yeah, but like they have the pieces there, and they've they've got obviously that ridiculous firepower that they're gonna make the playoffs. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that this team makes the playoffs, unless like we, you said, Connor McDavid, Dryside will get injured for half the season, and then you know they'll probably capitulate. But they should make playoffs, and once you make playoffs, anything's possible. Um, so, but I I do feel like that the the that blue line needs to be better in yeah. playoffs for them to be, do anything. Well, I, I agree. That, that performance against the Kings in the first round basically summed up, and I was like, they'll get, the, they'll get killed by Vegas because Vegas have enough defensive structure to shut down the McDavid line, and that's exactly what sort of happened. McDavid was still good and strong, but... Vegas were good enough to shut it down, which the Kings weren't. And that's a big reason why they lost in that first round, the Kings, because they just couldn't, they weren't strong enough defensively and like they couldn't shut down the offense, but they were still putting up good numbers. It was just, it was a disgusting defensive um, series that yeah. against the, the Kings. I, I think and a lot of that comes down to coaching juice. though as well, not just the players um, and the yeah. system. Like I, I know Nurse has a little bit of defensive liability, obviously Bouchard, um, and all that. Obviously, very offensive minded. You know, seventeen points in twelve games in the playoffs. Um, but I do think, like watching their style, uh, it's very counter, um, attacking of like, very loose counter attacking, like going all for that counter attack, and then you know you you do a bad turnover, and all of a sudden your defense is just wide open. There's like so much wide open ice through the middle. Um, that's what I've noticed um, personally, and I think that might come down to somewhat of a coaching thing as well. And I feel like that's why they do leak a little bit more, not just because of that defense, but just a bit of a coaching as well. Um, you know, with that said, like, they got three players in the top 20 uh, for five on five giveaways. So you got Drysidle, Bouchard, and Nurse. Drysidle, obviously, up there. Because he's a passing man and in, in, in the offensive zone, he's making those passing plays. So even though he's fourth in the um, uh, giveaways five on five in the league, he's only 28% of them were in the D zone, D zone. Whereas ninth and 16th were Bouchard and Nurse. And Bouchard's was um, 68% and Nurse was 75% in the D zone. So that that's pretty, that's pretty horrendous in regards to where you're giving it away the puck. And that is why a lot of the times their um, defense looks so open is because some of the, those giveaways are being done in the D zone. And um, I think that comes down to structure as well. Uh, just playing too open sometimes. Like they're, they're, when they're playing fast, it like the ice looks small, and they the other team doesn't have um, breathing room. But once something like falls apart, like you you just look at it and it's like, oh wow, there's a lot of ice open right now. Oh, there's a pass, and oh, they're in on a goal. And um, that just kind of seems to be the way that I've l- looked at a lot of Edmonton games and. Like, you know, you can put some of uh, some of it on Skinner and Campbell because you know you want them to step up and take those saves, but some some quality like you you can't you can't stop that. And I just want to mention also like you bring up David Drysaddle. We just had Austin Matthews do the big signing extension. Drysaddle's contract's up in two years. Obviously, he's going to get paid. Um, you know, what, whatever term and whatnot, whatever, but he's going to get paid. So that, that contract, like, you don't get that um, value out of his contract anymore. McDavid, in three years, gets paid. He probably gets paid maximum. So then you don't get value out of that contract. And I, I just think in my mind that they've probably got a two-year window here because they they have 
pretty much one of the worst prospect pools in the league at 28th in the league, ranked roundabout. It's pretty much non-existent. We can see that in the last two drafts, there's only one first rounder, and that was traded to Nashville. Traded yep. <laughs> so it's not even there anymore. Um, yeah. Only three picks this year. Uh, some, two of them very late, and uh, four last year. One of them traded already. Three of those are late. So there's no prospects coming up. I. Don't, you've basically got a very small window here and it's probably going to be like two years. So it's either this year or next year. Um, in my opinion, like I know McDavid can do things, but once he, he and Dress are signing those new contracts, you lose a lot of that, um, yeah. that, that, that value in their contracts. And I, that, that is my worry. And if they do or, resign with Edmonton, you know, do they win a cup? Well, you've got to, you, you know, you've got to be concerned, right? Because Austin Matthews, which I mean, will, this will be discussed in the yeah, video we'll do, on we'll that do a video contract. On that itself, yeah. But um, you know, thirteen point two five. Are you telling me that dry is worth less than Matthews? No. Like yeah, well, doesn't you know, that, uh, if you're that talking automatically to... like dry is like fifteen, McDavid's like seventeen. Yeah, like, yeah. That, I that's, just that's how it is. I, in my I, yeah, because like that Matthews contract's a massive overpay, a hundred percent. Yeah, but. Like, for me, Leon Dreisaitl was top three in the league. Like, you've got... um, It's a toss-up between him and McKinnon, yep. But, um, you know, obviously McDavid's number one. But, you know, Dreisaitl was top three in the league. Matthews isn't. And he just got 13.25 without term. Mm. So, I don't know. I just look at it and go... <laughs> it, it, Dreisaitl might, might take a team-friendly deal, an actual team-friendly deal. Um... And he might decide to only take eleven million or something like that. And you know, Oilers that's still a that's still a two and a half million dollar bump up. So that's gonna still eat out the cap, but it's better than a you know, fourteen, fifteen million dollar contract, which Which is like almost double, yeah. By all means, like you know, with what Matthew's just signed, can you tell me dry cider was not worth more? Like if mm. yeah, if thirteen point two five is is Austin Matthews, you're probably looking at fourteen mil minimum for for dry cycle, which is just insane. Because even if the cap does go up four million as they're rumored to be, this at the end of this season, and then it goes up another few million after that, his contract alone would be an, a five and a half million dollar increase. <laughs> Well, we just so had our first just, ever you know, in history ten million plus dollar contract win the cup with Jack Eichel yeah. with Vegas, and there was yeah. ten million flat. And it's yeah. because also they went over the salary cap because LTIR and all that, like the, all the teams do these days. So the yeah. first time in history it happens, the salary cap only is going up one million this year. You can boast how much it's going to go up in the future. Honestly, I could see it not going up in the future purely because I can see some world events happening. Um, economies in the world are, sh uh, are pretty shite. And well, that's all it takes, right? It, it, it is, just takes another you know. lockdown system um, to then just ruin the, the revenue. A lot of the revenue they made is purely on, on the things that a lot of fans don't like, is like those um, advertisements they've done, those virtual advertisements. And it's, that's how they're making a lot of the, their revenue to boost this. So even though if it does go up, it's not really great for us fans who don't like viewing that type of stuff so it's it's just one of those things that i can see a word where the salary cap doesn't go up or it goes up minimal and you know if you're signing austin matthews like contracts um i feel like this could eat you there's only been well really imagine one, yeah imagine having 30 plus mil taken up by two players oh yeah yeah you say like, like maybe, maybe 90 mil like that's 30 um, cap that's thirty three percent of your um thing, and it's like, well, oh. like well, you can't you can't do that. Like um, you know, Toronto and Edmonton have pretty much been the prime examples that you can't be so top heavy. You need you need the defense. Obviously, they got that contract in Nurse, which theoretically would be good of a nine million dollar defender, but he's not a nine million dollar defender. And Honestly, no matter how, how good you think some players are and should they get 12, should they get 11, whatever, you have to outvalue the contract. You need to get more value from the contract than it's worth. That's why you need either team-friendly deals or you sign somebody for term that wasn't performing at its at his peak and then they peak. 
You know, it's kind of like the McKinnon. Uh, six million, obviously starts peaking. Bank cup. Uh, New Jersey just signed Jack Hughes, eight million. He's clearly just um, starting the peak last year and is probably worth eleven mil plus um, in today's market. So, oh, get... if, he, if he signed today, it would have been ridiculous. Yeah. Like yeah. So you, yeah. you're just looking at like you got to get value out of these contracts. I don't see value in these contracts. There's a, um, a few detrimental ones. And if they do these big re-signings and don't get team-friendly deals, um, it, it is worrying. Like, people people say they only really make 30% because of taxes and all this stuff. But we all know McDavid gets a lot of money through endorsements um, just in and itself. And a lot of these players do um, get a few million extra just, just purely in endorsements. And... Like, it's just my big question. How much is a cup worth to you? How much is a dynasty worth to you? Like, 12 million to 10 million. Is that 2 million or, or let's say, 10 million over a span of the contract? Is that worth a cup or two or three? Like, and in my opinion, yeah. I I'll would, I would do a Bergeron and take, take a hit and be like, I'm going for it. Because you already got, like, um, family. You already got millions. Like, you, you oh. got lifelong money that you retire on, yeah. your family retires on. You yeah, don't. One hundred percent. You don't need that extra. And don't you? Don't you want the stories? Yeah. Uh, like you know, to tell friends, family, kids, whatever it is down the track. Like you know, poor. Oh, how good was it when we won the twenty twenty four Stanley Cup? How good was it when we won the twenty six Stanley Cup? How was it when we went back to back? Like you know. What's your what's your career when you go? I could tell you right now, Jumbo Thornton would uh, I reckon happily hand back a, a few million dollars a year on some of those contracts, even though he he wasn't paid extravagantly by any means. But I guarantee you, he would hand back millions of dollars for a cup, just yeah. just one, just like, one. Like what? I I don't know like how you would try and do it, but I would love to see like um. It, you know, it's risky in a sense. You get injured, it hurts your career. But like a McDavid or Dryside will take a one or two year deal. Just like, hey, I'm gonna do like four million for one or two years, and like this is yeah. we're we're going for it. Like you get mm. you get me the team around me, and then then I sign the big fu money um, contract once we won the cup. You know, yeah. well, it's that, like it's like the Kane and Taze we were talking about it earlier, where yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, they were big contracts, but they won three cups. <laughs> yeah. But you know, well, like Crosby, they, they, didn't, they didn't get paid but... till they won the cups. Like Kane Taves didn't exactly. get paid. Dowdy Kopitar didn't get paid till they won the cups. Um, but they McKinnon had, didn't get know... paid till he won the cup. Like, like all those people get paid after they win the cup. Um, you know, Sidney Crosby is the only outlier where like a fifteen percent plus contract w- wins the cup. Um, in his, in his first year in that, and, uh, and he was a pretty contract. special player. In, and I in, think he's a pretty special place, person, so. player, um, <laughs> and leader, and everything. So, a very yeah. big outlier. And you haven't been able to do it with McDavid, and you've had multiple years to do it with him. Granted, like McDavid doesn't have that, um, uh, like Malkin and uh, oh my God, I'm forgetting his name. You know the defender. Ah, uh, jeez. Latang. Latang. That is the one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so well, I'm, like, I mean he's got a dry sidle next to it <laughs> but, but that that is the thing though he's got a dry sidle like Nugent just hit 100 points it can can produce like so he just doesn't have the defender he like, just doesn't have that defense he doesn't have the he doesn't have the depth man. like um you got yeah look you got no prospect pool so you're not getting prospects you got your thir- um three next year's first overalls uh first round sorry so those are your tradable things. They have traded some uh, future picks. Like, a, I don't have it on me at the moment, but, like, I think they're missing their third and fourth this year, their second or something next year and whatnot. So you, you do have somewhat limited picks to trade, but you have to trade them. But they're at the cap here as well, and I, I, I just think they've got this year and next year to do it. And unless Dreisaitl and McDavid take a big pay cut... I'm talking big because, like, I feel like they're probably going to be getting 15 plus um, by the time that comes up, and I don't think that's doable uh, to win a cup with that. So that's what I mean. Like McDavid, McDavid takes uh, 12.5 mil. Hmm. Like he he doesn't take an increase. He just takes what he's yeah. been on for the last 
eight years or whatever his contract was Let's over. Take bigger signing bonuses. And... <laughs> well, I, imagine that, right? Like, if he did that, you'd be like, yep, yeah, this, this guy wants to win. This guy is happy with that. Like, $12.5 million is still going to be massive. But it would be like, yo, this guy wants to win. This guy wants to put money back into the team, and he wants to build a team around him. But yeah, again, if if they do take those that that monster paycheck, um, it is going to be very difficult, especially with that Darno Nurse contract not expiring until twenty twenty uh, twenty thirty. Um, but yeah. yeah, look, with with Ekholm again, I'm interested because that could be the piece that this defense needs. Um, can he teach Bouchard how to how to defend? Um, or can he be that coverage for Bouchard? Maybe you know Nurse and Bouchard take a um, take a, a step forward this year, and they're not in the top twenty of uh, giveaways, and especially in the defensive zone, because um, that's that's ultimately what they need. They need some defensive accountability. Um, can Ekholm provide that? I think he, he can, and that's where I can see this team taking that next step. I don't think it comes down to... I don't think Connor McDavid needs to put up 200 points next season for them to win a cup. I think he could have a... He could actually drop in points, and yeah. and they could win the cup because it comes down to that defense. If that defense... They were, they were first in the league for goals for at 3.94 um, goals per game or whatever, but they were 17th in the league for goals against. Yeah, so, over, over three, like, you're not really doing it. They're almost scoring basically four mm-hmm. goals a game, but you can't really be conceding three. A lot of it no. wasn't really on the goalies. Like, Campbell didn't have the greatest of seasons, but, you know, they do have a good goal tending tandem in regards to chemistry. Like, um, Skinner and Campbell get along well. Um, I've heard good things from Skinner that, you know, they're, they're helping each other and Campbell's helping him. So, they have that going for them. It, it's, it really just comes down to... I think Skinner and Campbell, um, one or both, can perform this year. I don't think that's your worry. Um, it really is that defense and that bottom six. Uh, like, the fourth line gets, like, less than 10 minutes ice time. Like, you you look at the other um, top-notch teams that really compete. Like, their their fourth line's getting 14-plus minutes. Like, they, 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 they trust them. They play them. They play, play them in the big... Um, the, big t- moments, um, you know, penalty kill, power plays, those type of things. So you you need to fix that bottom bottom six. Uh, you've got you got first round picks to, to trade. I th- you you got to go all in because you're already all in. Um, you're almost at the point where you have to nuke it if, you, um, if you're not careful because your prospect pool is poor and you've just pra- traded now um, one of your best prospects to Nashville for um, Ekholm, and granted, Ekholm's great, but that's just a prospect gone. And, um, yeah, like, they don't have much dead cap, and it's just a two million dead cap, and you just have to have better salary management. It's really just that simple. It's a, it's a salary cap era. You can get the best players in the league, but you need to manage a team, not, not players. And Toronto and Oilers uh, show that quite well, that you need a, need a team. That's why Canes, New Jersey... Um, Dallas, like those teams are really my favourites to win the cup this year because they have a full full four lines, full defence, um, two goalies, etc. So, and I can't. Why Vegas won the cup last season? Besides the salary cap, that's why the Avs did it. That's why Tampa's done it. It it, is it's the same motto. Um, they've got superstars, but they still bat deep. Yep, and that's ultimately what you need which is what Edmonton's lacking which and, and is again for a long concern. time too they, 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 have, they, have, yeah. they have not addressed it um for, for a long time they've tried but it's never been fully addressed and they just don't have those fourth liners that grit that you've seen in like the Tampa with Patrick Maroon all that they have that grit that leadership play hard play those minutes and I, I, I worry for them because I, I see the window being about two years depending on how these um how the dry side of extension goes. And so I, I'm really thinking they have to win it this year or next year. And if they don't, then I'm really concerned that uh, if McDavid does stay, that he'll never win a cup, which is which is horrible to say for um, a player of his caliber. And 
basically probably one of the best, if not the best, we've seen of all time. And yeah, that, that's horrible for the NHL to say like, hey, our best player didn't win a cup just through sheer mismanagement. And Well, that's it. I mean, you know, Ovi got his cup in the end. Crosby's got three cups. Like, you know, if you're talking about generation, generational talent, like Crosby and Ovi would have been the two big ones over the course of the last 15 years or whatever it's been. Um, they won their cups. McDavid is is now that you've got McDavid and Matthews, but you know. Um, well, McKinnon's won a cup, so you could probably argue he's McKinnon's, the best in the league because he's just got that cup. Like, right? He's won, yeah, he's <laughs> he's won that cup. But yeah. like, that's the thing. Like, when you're looking at these players that you're like, yeah, they're gen, like they're generational. You don't see these guys. You don't see a McDavid. You don't see you know McDavid's every day of the week. Like, he is a one of a kind player. And if he goes through his career and never won, wins a cup, that's just absolute insanity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, it'll be interesting to see. Um, can they win it this year? Because uh, I, I agree with you, I, I think. And I'd love to hit, know what you guys think. Um, what do you think Dreisaitl and McDavid's next contracts are? Do you think that they're, you know, getting towards that 15 mil? Do you think they're north of 15 mil? Um, or do you think they they do the sort of team friendly thing and 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 take a bit of a um, a bit of a pay cut? And I'm not talking an Austin Matthews team friendly deal, by the way. I'm talking about an actual team like friendly 10 million, deal. Like the 10 um, million, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not um. No, oh, you saved not, us a uh, million. <laughs> uh, it didn't even save you a million, mate. Yeah. Like he <laughs> he got more than he should have. He should have mm. like 11 million, and I would have considered that a team friendly. That's sort of what you're worth, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Um, Do you think that they're going to get paid um, or do you think they'll do the team thing because they've already made some money um, and I I, I feel like both these players would desperately want that cup now. So I'm interested in in hearing your thoughts, guys. Mm. Let us know in the comments below. Um, Yeah, I don't have too much more to add. I just know one little interesting stat that um, shootout attempts, they only had three goals on shooting shootout attempts out of 17. So the fourth worst in the league um, in shootout attempts, uh, just above New Jersey at 17%, uh, New Jersey at 16. Seattle being the only team in the league that did not score a goal on shootout um, out of seven attempts, which... um, you know, it's very minimal attempts, but they didn't score one. Yeah. Which which is interesting yeah. to think from the talent they have here, but clearly it shows that, you know, their defenders or whatever, um, their their depth who get those shootout attempts um during thing, they just can't pull it off. So yeah, I thought it was just something very interesting to note there as well. It not a big thing. Um uh, it shootouts or shootouts it happens, but I just thought it was an interesting stat for a team that's so top heavy, talented that with McDavid and Drysaddle, you thought it would have been a little bit higher than that. Um, sure. Other than that, no, that's it for me. Yeah, I, I've got nothing else to add there. So yeah, leave, leave a comment below what you think of this team. Can they win it over the next two years? Um, is it winnable even further than that, or do the contracts hurt them? Do they take the um, cap hits uh, for the team? And then yeah, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content, and until the next video, we'll catch you later, guys. Yes.